even though there is an incredible diversity of chemical compounds found in the body, they can all be placed into one of two different categories, inorganic or organic. Inorganic compounds typically aren't made up of any carbon atoms and have a simple structure. They are small compounds that consist of just a few atoms held together by either ionic or covalent bonds. Examples of inorganic compounds found in the body include water, that's the body's most important and abundant inorganic compound, carbon dioxide, CO2, many acids such as carbonic acid, H2CO3, bases like sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and salts such as sodium chloride, NaCl. In contrast, Organic molecules are carbon-based, with chains of many carbon atoms making up a significant portion of their chemical structures. In addition to carbon atoms, other atoms such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus atoms are commonly found in the structures of organic molecules. Most organic molecules are quite large, consisting of dozens to thousands of atoms, and have complex structures held together by covalent bonds. The biggest organic molecules are called macromolecules, with the prefix macro meaning large. Macromolecules are made up of smaller chemical building blocks called monomers. The prefix mono means one, and the suffix mer means units, one unit, or one building block. Most macromolecules are also classified as polymers, which are long-chain molecules formed by covalently bonding together many smaller monomers. When you think of a polymer, imagine a child's plastic bead net where the entire necklace is the polymer and the individual beads that make it up, that are pushed together to assemble it, are the monomers. Some natural polymers found in the body include the polysaccharide sugar glycogen, a branching polymer made out of glucose monomers that is stored in the liver and muscles. The body's proteins are also polymers made out of chains of amino acid monomers. Because of their larger size and complexity, organic compounds also possess many unique properties and perform many of the body's important functions. Examples of organic compounds that we'll be learning more about in this unit include carbohydrates, the sugars, lipids, the fats and oils, proteins, and nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA. Organic compounds are carbon-based. But why carbon? Why aren't organic compounds built around atoms of other elements like potassium, zinc, or aluminum? One main reason is that carbon has the ability to easily bond with other carbon atoms to form large molecules having an incredible variety of unique structures and functions. Remember that a carbon atom has four valence electrons in its outermost shell which means it can form up to four single covalent bonds with four other atoms to form straight chains, branch chains, or ring structures. When carbon atoms covalently bond with other carbon atoms, they form a chain called the carbon skeleton. If the carbon atoms in the carbon skeleton are bonded to hydrogen atoms, a compound called a hydrocarbon is formed. In addition to hydrogen, there are other specific atoms or molecules that can attach at various points to the carbon skeletons of organic molecules. These are called functional groups, and they give the compounds they're attached to distinct chemical and physical properties. This is similar to how prefixes and suffixes give words meaning, which we know is a huge help in learning anatomy terminology. For another analogy, think of cooking, like if you're making soup from scratch. The water and the stock are like the carbon skeleton, forming the foundation or base of the soup. 
The spices and other vegetables you add to the soup are like the functional groups, which give the soup its unique flavors and texture. We can use functional groups to classify different organic molecules, and because they react in specific ways, they can help us predict a molecule's behavior. Some common examples of functional groups include hydroxyl, amino, carbonyl, and carboxyl groups. A hydroxyl group consists of an oxygen atom covalently bonded to a hydrogen atom. Hydroxyl groups are common in alcohols, and you can remember this because the word alcohol contains the OH group as part of its name. An amino group consists of a nitrogen atom covalently bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Amino groups are found in the structure of all amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. A carbonyl group consists of a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom. Chemicals with carbonyl groups are classified based on the location of the carbonyl group in the carbon skeleton. Ketones have a carbonyl group within the carbon skeleton. It's kept in the middle of the skeleton. The aldehydes, in contrast, have a carbonyl group located at the end of the carbon skeleton. It's all the way at the end of the skeleton. A carboxyl group consists of a carbonyl group bonded to a hydroxyl group. It's commonly found in acids called carboxylic acids. Like the amino groups, carboxyl groups are also found in the structure of all amino acids. They put the acid into an amino acid. We will encounter these and more examples of functional groups as we further explore the body's organic chemistry. Because of the large size of organic molecules, we often abbreviate their structural formulas when we write them out. The molecular formula for the sugar glucose is C6H12O6. Here is the complete structural formula with all of its atoms included. The dashes between the atoms and the lines connecting the atoms making up the ring represent single covalent bonds. Here is the abbreviated structural formula of glucose written using standard chemical shorthand. To simplify the diagram, we leave out the symbols for the single hydrogen atoms and for carbon atoms at the points where two covalent bond lines intersect. In these abbreviated diagrams, we assume that there are carbon atoms at the corners of the ring. We show the oxygen atom because we can't assume that there will be an oxygen atom at that particular position. Simpler diagrams such as this are commonly used throughout your course materials for ease of communication.